to share? I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know the idea worth spreading. I don't know the hilarious story to illustrate my point. I don't know that poignant personal anecdote to bring a tear to your eye. I don't know the way to San Jose. I don't know how to get from point A to point B, or whether it's better to be or not to be. I don't know. The most generative statement in the universe. I don't know. The energy source of creation, innovation, self-actualization. I don't know. The cliff's edge that artists, philosophers, and scientists have peered over and leapt from in order to create some of the most life-changing, paradigm-shifting work in history. I don't know. Something I personally have a lifetime of experience with. But I'm not just going to talk about not knowing. We're going to create it together. My amazing audience volunteers are going to assist me with a theatrical experiment involving the use of some simple and familiar audio devices, just like this one I'm wearing. So if the ushers could come outfit my ensemble, we're going to turn this theater into a rehearsal studio. Oh, you. You're all being invited into the process of experimental theater artists. I use these devices in my show, but not like we're going to use them here today. Today is an experiment. And I don't know if it will be a dynamic demonstration. I don't know if it will be an entertaining piece of theater. I don't know if what we're trying will work or not. In my tradition of theater practice, we don't come in with preconceived ideas or answers. We set up experiments like this one and see what the results are. Not knowing is our way of working. And as celebrated director Anne Bogart says, you can't create results. You can only create conditions in which something might happen. So while these people over here help create the conditions in which something might happen, let me tell you some of my personal experiences with not knowing. When I was little, I had skinny legs and two younger sisters. And everyone bought me pink things, and I hated pink things. So I trade my pink things for my sister's blue things and walk around in turquoise pajamas that were two sizes too small. When I was little, I had big dreams. I wanted to be Madonna, but there already was a Madonna. So I decided to be a writer, because my fifth grade teacher liked a poem I wrote about going crazy, something I didn't know about, because I'd need to wait till I was older. I came into this world not knowing. As a child, that's where I lived. Open curiosity, constant inquiry, unbridled fascination, I was part theater director, part chef, part engineer, pulling the world apart and putting it back together every day. I made wild connections that delighted and astounded. Ideas and stories so fantastical my adult friends couldn't fathom them. But then eighth grade came along and everything went straight to hell because hormones and naturally curly hair, which should come with an owner's manual and a vat of flex gel, but it doesn't. And it takes about 28 years to figure the whole thing out. I was at the halfway point, where there's just as much teenagerness ahead of you as there is behind you. And yes, OK, my boobs finally came in, along with my acne. And suddenly, there I was, not small and curious anymore, but the most fearsome creature on planet Earth, a teenage girl <laughs> who knew, like, everything. OK. Everybody knows if you haven't declared your life's purpose, by the time you declare your college major, you are screwed. Not knowing had become a liability. At some point, without my permission, the wild searching inquiry of childhood ended, and I became old enough to know better. I spent hours in my room just sitting there, paralyzed by what I didn't know. I felt lost, alone, and confused. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life or who I wanted to be. I looked ahead, and all I saw was this checklist of things I was supposed to accomplish, like collecting points in some video game, a degree, a career, a marriage, a baby, a nervous breakdown. I thought, 
Maybe if I collect enough points, I'll feel secure. I'll be okay. So I got married. I got my master's. I became a magazine editor. It was early for my nervous breakdown, but I've always been an overachiever. <laughs> I was at the gym one day when I was 24 years old. I was on a stationary bike, and I knew with every fiber of my being that if I stopped pedaling, I would kill myself. Talk about motivation to exercise. I rode that bike for hours with one part of me hell-bent on death and the other part trying to outwit the murderer in my own head. Certainty finally shows up, and it's in the form of suicidal ideation. Great. I got an excellent workout. A couple days later, I was diagnosed with major depressive disorder. A year after that, my marriage ended so suddenly it made my head spin. If not knowing could take human form, that was me in the winter of 2002. I knew nothing. I felt I was nothing. I didn't know how I would carry on or if I could. I didn't even know if I could get myself out of bed. I'd failed at the video game of adult accomplishments. Everything I used to define myself and how to be successful in life was gone. I felt like an all-powerful void, sucking everything around me into my dark emptiness. But here's the thing about voids. We might define a void as a vacancy, an absence of matter or of knowledge, a vacuum. Aristotle said, nature abhors a vacuum. It was his conclusion that nature requires every space to be filled with something which to my mind might actually mean the opposite. Nature loves a vacuum. Nature loves an empty space, a blank page, a moment vibrating with pure potential, ready to be filled. At my lowest point, what I couldn't know at the time was that I had become a vacuum, a powerfully attractive space that because of my emptiness, because of my uncertainty, was drawing something toward me. Poet and mystic Rumi said, what you seek is seeking you. My mother, a physician and researcher, tells me, if there's a problem, then there has to be a solution. The act of asking a question draws the answer toward it. Asking the question attracts the answer. We grow up thinking the opposite. We're supposed to have the answers. We're supposed to be sure. I disagree. The energy. The engine of not knowing begins as soon as we say those three little words. I don't know. Once I stopped chasing my idea of how life was supposed to be, life started living itself through me. A subtle creative energy was operating, and my state of emotional desolation became a blank canvas upon which I began to paint. Not knowing became a playground again just like when I was a kid. Director Max Reinhardt would have told me that this was perfect training for life in the theater, which is for all those who have secretly put their childhood in their pockets and run off and away with it to play on for the rest of their days. My life became a tumult of new experiences. There was the ice cream for breakfast phase, the sex in the city phase, and then I started running every Saturday with some trucker mild women in their 40s. I fell in love with running. I ran a half marathon, and through the process of training for it, I noticed the stronger I got on the outside, the stronger I felt on the inside. A curiosity opened up. How far can I take this? I don't know. I trained for a marathon, and then an Ironman, a day-long festival of pain comprised of a 3.8K swim, a 180K bike, and a 42.2K marathon. When I registered, completing an Ironman seemed impossible. I had no idea how to start, let alone if I was going to finish. But I didn't have to know. Because every time I thought I couldn't go on, I was wrong. Every ending became a beginning. Every loss became a gift. Every problem became a solution. And every time I leaned into not knowing, that empty space 
void of knowledge and understanding, a second wind was waiting to fill my sails again. In a state of not knowing, there's an absence of expectation, assumptions, and even control. You become an empty vessel, open and receptive to whatever might arrive. Nature abhors a vacuum. If you create a vacuum within yourself, nature will fill it for you. And what comes to fill that empty space is energy. Propulsive, expansive, creative energy. This energy comes from all kinds of sources, both within and without. Inspiration, insight, resources, and collaborators. The perfect person with the exact skill set you need. An opportunity that appears as if by magic. But it's not magic. It's nature. The power of not knowing is not a new concept. In its simplest terms, this is how new artists work. This is how it works for researchers, designers, philosophers, and engineers. We actively challenge our assumptions to strip away what is known. Grotkowski, a Polish theater maker, calls this via negativa, the process of elimination. Create an empty space, and the vacuum of curiosity, creativity, and necessity does the rest. This is how new discoveries are made. And after Iron Man, I started to learn how to work with it. I wondered if I could take what it takes to be a great athlete, rigor, resilience, risk, and apply it to being a great artist. Turns out, that's the definition of an artist. An opening space for that question drew in another. Could I merge my two passions, running and theater, into one? The answer, of course, was, I don't know. There were lots of I don't knows during the creation of Endure, a run woman show. In fact, my creative process is just a series of I don't knows and impossible ideas all strung together. The more I lean into not knowing, the wider, the weirder, and the more wonderful my work becomes. Because I didn't end up making regular theater for runners. I ended up making avant-garde, interactive, site-specific, audio dance theater for everyone. <laughs> not knowing allowed me to drop the assumption that theater has to take place in a theater. And I took the performance outside. Not knowing allowed me to create a story that moves not just through time, but space. Traveling scene by scene, through different environments as the story unfolds. Not knowing attracted great collaborators who helped me create a new audience experience of sound and synchronicity with common devices used in novel ways. Not knowing brought the show to New York, to London during the 2012 Olympic Games, and to Edinburgh Festival Fringe. It led to a minister of culture showing up to a theater premiere in her sneakers and to major sports media publishing reviews of experimental performance. As children, we're experts of not knowing. Picasso said, all children are artists. The problem is how to remain an artist once we grow up. As adults, we fear not knowing, or try to avoid it at all costs. Many of us only rediscover it by accident. A crisis hits, and everything we thought we knew vanishes. Or as every first-time parent can attest, that new baby enters the world, and not knowing is a way of life. But this doesn't have to be scary, haphazard, or accidental. Clearing the internal space for the power and potential of not knowing can be a conscious, intentional practice. And the good news is that all you need to do to access this powerful energy source is nothing. You don't know. Accept it. Embrace it. Surrender. All the type A's in the audience are going, screw this. <laughs> but listen, you know nothing. You're totally out of your depth, bobbing in a sea of uncertainty. So relax. Grab a cocktail. And let me offer a piece of advice from Anne Bogart. 
She says embarrassment is a partner in the creative act, a key collaborator. If your work doesn't sufficiently embarrass you, then very likely no one will be touched by it. That desire to control, that deep craving to feel secure and certain, the fear that everything will fall apart if you're not managing every detail and accurately predicting every possible outcome, yeah, you can let all that go. Instead of managing things out there, our real job is to cultivate the space in here. Trust that nature really does abhor a vacuum and that what you seek really is seeking you. And if all else fails, trust my mom. If there's a problem, then there really is a solution and it's on its way. And this is the best, most beautiful part. While you're hanging out, not knowing, vulnerable, ever so slightly terrified, you are not alone. Every artist, every athlete, every scientist, every parent, every child, every human being on planet Earth is right there with you. The luminous Gilda Radner said life is about not knowing, having to change, taking the moment and making the best of it without knowing what will happen next. We can't know. It's part of the great glorious mystery of the universe. And this communion of uncertainty is something that's so easy to forget when we feel like everyone else has it together and we're the only ones without a clue. Not knowing opens you to the infinite possibility of the universe. Knowing is about finality. It's about limits. It's about endings. It's not knowing that pulls impossible dreams towards you and turns them into lived experiences. So instead of rejecting the mystery and the gifts the universe is trying to give you, why not invite the mystery in? Set a place for not knowing and see what it brings to the table. I promise you, it won't arrive empty-handed. Thank you. Take a bow, y'all. Bravo!